In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this custom stamp. If you're new here, I'm Carly Hall and I love all things crafts. And if you like crafts too, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I post a new craft tutorial every single week. We're going to jump right into this by exploring what a stamp is and how to make one. So if we look at this stamp here, we have a stamp block. And then on the opposite side, we have a mirror image of what the text will say, a piece of rubber, and then underneath is actually a little piece of foam so that when you push down, there's a little bit of give. So we are going to recreate that using our Glowforge. Here's what my stamp looks like. So you can see that I have a piece of rubber and then between the rubber and the block, I have a piece of foam and a wooden block. To do that, we're going to use a design program. You can use whatever program you choose. I would recommend Adobe Illustrator or Silhouette Studio Business Edition, something that you can export your file to and upload it to Glowforge. So I'm going to show you how to do this project in Adobe Illustrator because that's my design program of choice. I have my image already designed, but we're actually going to do a recreation for my friend who's a teacher and change it up just a bit. So she wants hers to say, please return this to, and then Miss Rangel, her name. So to do that, I'm going to grab my text tool. Actually, first we'll grab a circle because I want my text to follow a circular path. And it doesn't have to be the exact same, but just kind of an ovally shape, something like that. And then I'm going to grab my text tool and type on a path. There we go. And type whatever you want it to say. So please return to. And I want to center my text. You can move your whole box around so that it centers where you need it to, so I can center it between the appropriate points like that. When making these stamps, you want your images to be a little thicker and bigger than you probably would think because you don't want to lose the details when you engrave. So you'll go ahead and choose a point size. Anything less than 18 is a little difficult to read. So if we look at my stamp, you can see that this book belongs to is a little smaller than 18 and it's losing a little bit of that detail. And then I'm also going to add a stroke on it to make it just a little bit thicker. I want my stroke to be the same color. So now it's a little thicker and I think that will appear a little bit better. So we have, please return to. To get this off the path, what we're going to do is right click and choose create outlines. You can see it creates an outline of my text, but it does not outline my stroke. So we also need to choose object, path, outline stroke. And now we've outlined both. We can come over to our pathfinder. We can also go to window and then pathfinder, and you're going to choose unite. So now I have my text created appropriately so that I can add it to my stamp. I'm going to make a copy of my image and we're going to ungroup this and grab just the book. So I want the book and then I need to put her name. So we'll grab the text tool again, Miss Rangel. And again, I'm going to err on the side of caution and make this a little bit bigger. And to make it fun, I'm going to use a script font. I used Think Pink, the regular option. I also added a stroke to my script font to make it a little thicker. We'll do the same thing. We'll create outlines and then object path, outline stroke and unite. Let's change this to black. And I'm also going to add a stroke to this because I did lose a little bit of my detailing on my stems and that looks like too much of a stroke. Losing a little bit of detail, but that's a little bit better. You can see that these stems here are super thin. So when you're creating your stamp, you may lose some detail there. 
And that's just something to pay attention to. If I wanted to go through and just add a little bit of thickness here, I could, but that's okay. It's just a return stamp. To make sure that those strokes come in appropriately, we're going to choose path, outline stroke, and unite again. Okay, so I'm going to make sure this is all aligned appropriately. So I'm going to grab everything and use align to make sure it looks good. I did kind of cheat this one a little bit over because I felt like it looked better, a little offset. And let's give a little bit more padding between these two. All right, so I have my stamp and my block is two by two. So I need my stamp to fit within this two by two area and have a little bit of padding around the edge. So this looks good, but I want to make sure that I make my image correctly so that it's reversed. So if you look at the stamp again, it's the mirror image of what my final image will be because I'm going to flip it over and stamp it. To do that, I'm going to draw a square. So I'm going to click the rectangle tool, just click anywhere on your canvas and I want it to be 1.9 by 1.9 since I'm using a two inch block. I don't wanna go all the way to the edge. So I have my square. I'm going to make a copy of that. So I have an extra one that will come in handy in just a second. So now let's group everything together. And I'm going to put my rectangle behind it. So I'm going to right click and arrange, send to the back. I'll change my text to white so you can see what's going on here. So right now, we actually we're going to need to make this a little bit smaller because my G is hanging off. Okay. So right now I have my text on top of a black box, but I actually need to cut it out to have it be transparent. So you can see when I move this image over, you can see the white through here and the gray through there. So I, if I were to move this one off, it's just white. So I need to actually cut them apart. So actually I'll change this to a different color so you can see what happens. So we'll make this yellow for now. Before I slice them apart, I'm going to mirror my image. So we'll come up to object, transform, and reflect. And we'll vertically reflect it. Okay, so now we can select both. You wanna align them and center them all up so that they're nice and centered. And then using that same Pathfinder window. So if you don't have it on your right hand side, you can go to window and then choose Pathfinder to open it up. And you'll choose this option here, which is exclude. So now it sliced it out of the middle, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so we have our stamp and it looks similar to my first one. And we have this extra box. This extra box will cut out our rubber. So to tell the glow forward we wanna cut, instead of filling it, we're just going to choose a stroke. So then we'll put this stroke right around the outside edge. So highlight both, align them, and now the Glowforge will see an image and it knows that the filled image we want to engrave it and then the stroke we want to cut. So go ahead and save your project file, save. And I'm just saving it as an SVG. These settings work great. Over on the Glowforge app, we are going to upload a new image. So we'll go ahead and import our artwork by uploading it. Once your image comes in, I'm going to just choose the one I need since I don't need these other two and I have my image ready to go. It will come in the correct size if you wanna double check that. You can see down here that it's 1.9 by 1.9 and that's what we want. So I'm going to power on my Glowforge so that I can put my material in and I'll show you what I'm using. Here's the material that we're cutting. It's a rubber, it's laser safe. I will link to it on Amazon. It's pretty affordable for a big sheet. I've already made three stamps using it. And then I also have a piece of black foam. This is EVA foam and I've added adhesive to both sides. It came with one side of adhesive and so I just added an adhesive sheet to the other side. So here's the foam that I purchased. And then I used double-sided adhesive sheets to add adhesive to this side. So I'm left with a piece of foam that now has adhesive on both sides. You can do this with any EVA foam and you can use 3M or any double-sided adhesive sheet. 
So I'm going to place both of these in the laser and I'm going to use some honeycomb pins just to pin them down in a couple of places. I'm going to place both of them in the laser at the same time. This isn't best practice since usually you wouldn't want to put things in your laser that are different thicknesses, but these are relatively the same thickness. So it actually worked out just fine. So I have my foam and my rubber in my laser and now I'm going to power my laser on. So the Glowforge scanned my laser bed and now I have a picture of what is in the laser and I can set my focus where I want my stamp to be. So my stamp is going to go somewhere around here. I forgot to add an extra square. So if you have the premium option, you can insert a square here. If you don't, you can upload an additional square, a 1.9 by 1.9 square. So I'm going to add a 1.9 by 1.9 square since I forgot to do that. And I'm going to place it on my double-sided adhesive. I'm going to set my focus by clicking these three dots here and then choose set focus. And I wanna set it where I'm going to cut and engrave my rubber. You can see the image kind of pulled away now that it knows the height of the material. So I'm going to place my image as close to my other designs as I want. And then I have my square over here. Now we're going to tell the Glowforge our settings that we're going to use. To start, we're going to click on our stamp image and then choose engrave. And I have a custom setting here. I'll show you what the settings are. It's a speed of 310, power of 90 and 450 lines per inch. I had seen a lot of settings all over the forums and in groups, and this is a setting that worked best for me. So we have our engrave done, and then our cut settings, we wanna make sure that we're on the correct cut. We'll use the cut option, and then my stamp cut settings are 130, speed 130, full power, and one pass. So we have those now set up, and then our foam settings, speed 275 and power of 80. So now all of our settings are ready to go. You wanna make sure that everything's lined up how you want it. If you wanna make any adjustments, do that now, and then click print. So our engraving cut time is 24 minutes. You can adjust your settings to make it go faster, but for the quality, I do recommend these cut and engrave settings. So I'm going to make sure my Glowforge is all vented out and then we'll get started. Once you're set up and vented out, you can hear my inline fan running. I'm going to click the go button. So here you can see the laser is engraving in real time and it's not a super fast engrave. I have about 20 more minutes left on this engrave and you do need to babysit your laser. You should always be sitting next to your laser when it's engraving and cutting, never walking out of the room, always watching it because if you step away and a flame catches one of these ashes, it could ignite and cause a fire. So make sure that you're watching over your laser the entire time and never leaving your laser unattended. So while I'm standing here, I did want to mention that if you're a premium subscriber on Glowforge, you can use their stamp maker feature. So I just wanted to quickly show you how that works. So if I click at the text tool and then type out my name, for example, and if I just want to stamp up my name, I can use the stamp maker option here I can choose the size padding that I want. They recommend 0.25, and then I can click Create Stamp. And all of that work that I did in Illustrator, it will automatically do for me. So it will mirror the image, it will take out the inside and flip it around. So you can see that now I have this custom stamp in seconds. So if you pay for the premium subscription of Glowforge, you do have that ability within the software, but if you don't pay for Glowforge, you can do this in Illustrator or Silhouette Studio Business Edition, any other program you already have. You do not need the premium software, although you can see that it is a very quick process. And it even gives you the two layers. So it has the engraved layer and the cut layer, which is pretty cool. So I did want to mention that while I'm standing here watching the Glowforge engrave.
Here's what it looks like. It's straight out of the laser. It is very ashy. You can vacuum this or just pop it in the sink and rinse it off. I'm just going to rinse it and wipe down my rubber. So I'm just going to rinse this off. And then my foam with the adhesive on both sides is ready to go. Here's what the stamp looks like after I just rinse it off with some soap and water. So you can see that it's a very nice deep engrave. So it engraved away all the negative space and then you're just left with the image. And now we can attach it to our base. So the block that I used for my original one, I just found out at a craft store. I can link to this exact one. It's a two inch block, but I decided that that was a little overkill and I used my saw to just cut it in half to get two blocks. So now I can use one block to make two stamps, which I think is a more appropriate stamp size since you're only grouping a little bit of it. So to assemble our stamp, we need to add our foam. So I'm going to peel off the yellow side liner and just place it onto my block in the center. So I have my foam attached on one side. And then if I remove the other liner, you can see the adhesive and I'm going to place my stamp right on top of that. So now we have the block, the foam and the rubber. To apply your ink on your stamp, I like to dab my stamp pad onto my design as opposed to rubbing it or using a big stamp pad. So I'm just going to cover the image completely with the ink. And then we'll do a test over on a scratch piece of paper. So you can see that with a bigger font size, you can easily read, please return to Miss Rangel. And now I'm going to stamp my little sticker sheet so that I can place it on the top of the block. I'll link to all of the stamp materials that I'm using, the rubber, the ink, the blocks, all that good stuff. So I have my little two inch square, a little less than two inch, and it's sticker paper. So I'm just going to line up my stamp, push down really well. And then I'm going to stick this to the top of the block. Make sure you have the correct orientation. Oops, smeared it just a little bit. Probably should have let that dry. So now I have the image and the stamp. If you don't want to permanently attach it to a block, you also can use these clear blocks and just stick the rubber right to it and it will grip on there. If it's sliding or moving a little bit, I just added a little bit of water and it stuck really well. And then you can just use your stamp and then if you want to take this one off and put a different one, you don't need to attach it to a block. The impression wasn't as crisp since you're missing that foam layer, but it still gave a good impression. I think that's everything. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like it and consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, everything will be linked in the video description. So if you want to purchase anything, including my referral link for a Glowforge, if you're interested in purchasing a Glowforge, I do have a discount in my referral link. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.